what we're here. You know, today was, or this week was to offer well, Naranza to do her uh, cleaning up the blueberry bushes and also uh, for me to, to get a couple of queens from, from Jay's uh, stock. And you might say, well, what the heck did you come all the way for beefs or to get queens here? You can get them just about anywhere. Well, over the years, Jay never treated his bees. And that's happened throughout the country for different people. And what, the, what he's basically doing is creating a varroa sensitive hygiene mite. I forgot exactly the, the mm -hmm. initials for it. So his bees have learned to adapt. You know, they, they clean themselves up. And that's, that's the theory. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two queens, take them back home, and then I'm going to graft. Uh, I'm going to put those bees in my hive, let her lay eggs, or let them lay eggs, and then I'm going to graft the, the larva from those and make my own queens from his stock. The only bad part about it is I don't have his drone, so I can't. I get half the genetics, so to speak. But it's still better than. Um, I treat my bees now with, a, with a Apigard, and I've had real good success with that. So I'm, I'm not losing bees because of, of the mites, but I want my bees to have that little extra incentive, to, or not incentive, but um, insurance that they can take care of those rural mites regardless. So. Um, this is a uh, basically the life cycle and what of the the queen. Um, all all eggs, all bees start out the same way, except for the drones, of course. Um, the queen lays eggs, and in three days' time, the eggs will start to to uh, to hatch out. Okay, the only difference between a queen and um, and the worker is. Queen cells, they, the workers are feeding them uh, royal jelly that whole time as opposed to just the first day. So, <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is, okay, we have to make sure we have a frame that has eggs on it. Okay, before that happens, so we have to take the queen out because you know, the whole purpose of it is to make the hive queenless. So when the hive is queenless, the bees decide, uh-oh, we got a problem. We need a queen. If they, as long as they have eggs in their, in, their, in their hive, they will make new queens. So what we're doing is we're forcing them to do that. Um, so first day as you take the, the queen out, what I do is, <clears throat> uh, my hives I got two boxes I have for, for brood. I have a deep and then I have a medium. Uh, so I find the queen, I put a top cover on top of the root box, I put a bottom cover on that facing the opposite direction. So I got the regular hive, the bees are coming out this way, the other box where I'm going to put the queen, they're going to go out the opposite direction. So I'll grab that queen and I'll put her in the top box. There's brood, there's, there's cells for her to lay eggs and we don't have to disturb her in any way. <clears throat> okay. We got the hive queen list. Okay, now the next day, the bees are saying, okay, we don't have any queen. We have to do something. Okay, so that's where I come in. I pull a frame, and I don't have my tool. We mislaid it. It's called a grafting tool. And what you do is you take this little tool, and you've got to find day-old larvae. Kind of, you use the Chinese bamboo one? Yeah, the yeah, because it's got that little, the little plastic little deal on it. it. Yeah, and that, you know, it's, it's an experience to, now I've, I've seen and heard of, of these, you know, the, the big companies where they, they sell thousands of bees, they just go back and forth, like, and I'm over there and gently take it out, put it in the queen cup. So, <clears throat> These are queen cups um, that you can buy. I bought these at Man Lake. I'll pass this around. As you can see, these are from last year. The, the ones that have wax on them are the ones that the, 
that I've harvested in Queens. They don't all take. Um, last year I had 50%, which, yeah. This goes what way? Okay. It goes up this way or this way? Just like inside the beehive, because you're simulating it. So you put a, you know, a bunch of these strips in here and the, they hang down. So mm -hmm. the queen's going to draw that. Um, when they find out that there's larvae in there, they're going to say, okay, well, that's, that's a good place to start. And it's the right uh, orientation, I guess, this is the, the big thing. Because normally the, the cells are out this way, and the queen cell, they're out at an angle. So they, you know, they're, they're thinking, okay, that's where the queen cell's going to be developed. They put a little baby inside those. And you can see the wax where they started on some of them, but they, for, for some reason or another, they didn't appreciate the way I did it. Maybe I, I mushed the larva, I don't know. But they're so tiny, you can actually, you know, the, lay, the egg is small, of course, but mm -hmm. the larva is even smaller. <laughs> So what you're basically doing is scooping up the royal jelly and seeing that little mm -hmm. tiny speck in there. Yeah, I have good eyes. Mm -hmm. But without the royal jelly, there won't be any thing to stick it and keep it in there. Right. Well, the royal jelly will, you know, it'll adhere to that. Yep. Make sure it stays moist. Um, and after those are filled out, you stick it back in, you stick it into the hive that's clean. And then from there, they'll start to, to draw, draw out that, that, those uh, cells so that your queen cells. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with what a queen cell looks like. <coughs> okay, it looks like a peanut. These are swarm cells. Yeah. Because they're on the bottom of, the, of the, the frame. But that's, you know, they're elongated because the queen, of course, is larger. 